Thank you so much for being here today. And thank you, Becca, for such an amazing introduction. Um, I just want to say uh, today we're just going to have a quick look at some major social media channels. And I want to go through as fast as I can, but make sure that it's as elaborate as possible. Um, before I begin, I want to thank um, Becca for hosting us today and then um, Amanda. Um, she is a brilliant uh, content designer. So I wanted to get her on this webinar as well so she can show you how to be self-sufficient at designing your own content going on forward. So without further to do, I will share my presentation so that we can start. Um, Amanda, while I get my presentation up, you wanna give a quick intro of yourself? Yeah, sure. So hello guys, and thanks Jude and Becca for the wonderful uh, introductions. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Um, my name is Amanda, as, um, as they both told you. So I work for the enterprise support team too. And uh, I'm a project coordinator, but I also do a lot of the graphics for enterprise support. So most likely any of the marketing and branding you've seen around, it's probably me that designed it. Um, so that, yeah, that's what I get up to. So today I'll be talking to you about how to be your own content creator. Brilliant, okay. So I'm just going to get my presentation up and share my screen. Sure. Okay. All right. Uh, I hope everyone can see it. Uh, can you see it back in Amanda? Yeah, can see it fine. Yeah, I can Perfect. see it fine on my screen as well. All right. Okay, let me just start off um, by asking and actually answering. I'm answering my own question, actually. Um, why is a social media strategy important? Now, um, a lot of people want to use social media for different purposes, that includes whether they want to run their own business or whether they want to like better themselves on social media and showcase their talents or even um, try to get a better job. Um, those are amongst very few things. There are other aspects of it, like trying to get your research out there into the world um, or displaying what you and your company does in a better light. So that is why social media is important. A strategy is very, very important in order to have a set list of things where it's easy to look at and action so you have everything prepared beforehand like anything in like life i guess you kind of have to be prepared but then be able to adjust as it goes along flexibility with a bit of structure so it's always a good idea to have a plan so i want to start start off with that and in order to have a plan the most important thing is to have a key goal no matter what you're doing on any of the social media platforms you shouldn't just do it because it's good to be on social media. You should, even if it's a small goal, um, you should definitely have something that you're working towards and you need a plan for that. So the social media platforms we're gonna talk about, especially due to time constraint, um, is basically Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. These, as you can see, have a very large amount of active users. And these active users are different. Sometimes there's a lot of niches within a social media platform, but um, that's spread out in almost every social media platform. I'm gonna be talking about that and tips to actually make yourself seem more um, visible in social media or your business. So as you can see, there's a lot of active users like Instagram has a billion active users with Facebook having 2.45 billion active users. And one of the um, key social media platforms, which has grown significantly um, within lockdown has been LinkedIn. Um, so we'll get into that as well. Now, this is coming into more of the question of, can I use social media for business growth? I, I understand for a lot of business owners, this just does sound like a stupid question that I asked on a, um, what's it called slide, but it's actually relevant because of the fact that um, it's not, can I use social media? It's like, will I use social media and how would I best use it, um, to be fair? So of course you can use it for business growth. It depends on what your target is um, and what you're planning on doing with that. 
Um, can I use social media to grow my personal brand? And I am quite aware of um, the people who have come into this webinar and it's not just going to talk about how to grow your business. It's going to talk about your own growth, even for a business. Personal branding is so important. If you're thinking about doing a business in two to three years or even five years, growing your own personal brand and positioning yourself as a thought leader in any of these platforms will be super beneficial for you going forward. And even uh, for a lot of grads who are looking for jobs, this is what you're going to be looking at, how to grow your personal brand if you're going to be using social media for that. Now, I'm going to get to actually LinkedIn because that is uh, possibly the biggest amount of questions I have gotten about um, in the past couple of uh, um, months. So um, LinkedIn is amazing because it's a highly engaging network for professionals and business owners. Um, the reason why that is, is because it is what it is created for. Um, the purposes of LinkedIn is basically talking about your professional achievements, putting your business achievements, but that's not limited to that. People always say, keep your personal stuff out of LinkedIn. I don't believe that because again, it's social media. It's personal to you and it's personal to your business. If you have a piece of content, which you think is personal, but you think it won't suit a professional environment, just tailor it. It's just looking at the right um, way to do it and how to tailor it. It's a great space to have a um, portfolio and showcase your work. So that includes your CV and that includes your, um, the posts that you do, that includes your business achievements. So it's not only through your CV. What you post on um, LinkedIn comes up and people can see that, your activity, who you're engaging with like recruiters, investors, other people who want to follow you will always look at this. Um, that's your face. That's essentially your PR um, when people go in. Uh, can expand your network digitally without ever having to meet someone. And I think LinkedIn is a brilliant space for that with making yourself a bit, uh, I call it COVID proof networking. Because at the end of the day, conventional forms of networking, we don't know whenever that will become very prominent again. I know it's starting back up slowly, but this is a great way to network. And although it is a digital connection, it's a great way to supplement something in the future when you want to build actual connections. These are the tips which I've found. Now, these are through testing for um, several years. Um, I've tested LinkedIn for several years. and. I've tested extensively quite recently in order to get results. All of these tips are result driven and I've made sure they're result driven because it, it wouldn't have any other impact if it didn't. Um, one of the biggest tips is keep your content rele relevant um, to a professional environment, even if it's a personal um, achievement. So that's what I said before. It's good to tailor it, but don't think you can't post it there. Um, take advantage of keywords. Now, this is a very, very, very specific thing that I've noticed with um, LinkedIn quite a bit. Um, through my research, I found out that if you are essentially announcing something, like this comes from recent graduates who are announcing um, that they've graduated, the LinkedIn algorithm makes it so that it shows to more people than a regular post. And that's a proven fact from a lot of research that I've read and seen through a lot of graduates. If you, if you use words like congratulating someone, I'm proud to announce, um, I've gotten this, it's, it's those kind of keywords. I mean, it depends on what you want to post about. Really boost your um, Instagram, uh, I mean, LinkedIn post. So it's, it's, it's really important for you to put something like that on the first sentence or even if it goes long. And this is very important for all social media platforms, actually speak from your personal perspective and offer a unique viewpoint. Now, if you try to make your viewpoint generic, the problem is people will not, they, they might find it valuable, but they won't see what you truly mean. Try to be as honest as possible, as honest as you can be to strangers, of course, but as honest as possible and try to be unique. If, if you are an artist, offer that perspective on things that are completely out of your realm, like politics, offer that perspective because people want to see that. Um, always remember to hashtag, uh, but be selective with your hashtags. Now, this is super important because 
sometimes there uh, people tend to use no hashtags or a lot of hashtags. The key thing is, in my personal opinion, from what I've seen, use four to five. And I'll talk about this later on as well. Use four to five on LinkedIn. Make three about, um, very uh, general, but still pertaining to the topic you're talking about. Make two a little bit more specific and have one of them, which is really specific to what you're talking about. And that really depends on what content you're posting about. Um, tag relevant people who might be interested in the post on your network. There's no shame in tagging. I know for a fact you don't want to bother anyone. And it's, I, I, I have the same feeling like I'm tagging um, people I know. Will they find it a bother? I, I don't think they will find it a bother, to be fair, because a lot of people want to engage and they, they feel like, oh, I was tagged in this. They think this is relevant to me. I think it is a good way for you to actually like boost it. You can put key people on your post. But then on your comment section, you can tag people if that makes you more comfortable so that you don't have to do anything with your post moving forward to actually um, delete that or edit that. If someone says, don't tag me, that's the worst case scenario. I have never encountered anyone telling me personally not to tag them. So that kind of thing. Send your post to relevant people. One thing that you might not know is, um, and you might know, is you can send your Instagram post to people. That means send it as a personal message and they can directly interact with it. So it is just, just, just test it out. If you feel that you don't want to tag them, just send, the, send it as a private message and they might actually like it. I mean, I'm pretty sure they will. Um, share your posts in groups. Now, LinkedIn groups um, is a very, very specific thing and they're growing LinkedIn groups. I was just part of a LinkedIn group examination control group where they were talking about how to improve LinkedIn groups because it's still at its inceptions. It's not like Facebook groups, which we'll go to later on, because LinkedIn groups don't have that much engagement yet, but it is a great place for you to showcase certain posts that you have, which might be relevant to the groups. Just remember, keep it relevant to the topic of those groups um, so that people don't find it negatively impactful and also the admins of those groups approve it. Always, when you're sharing your post, um, put a headline or something in apart from your post. Uh, check this out. I think this group would find it interesting because if you just share a post, it does look more like self-promotion, but you want to do some self-promotion, but in the most acceptable way possible. So even if you're doing it, you need to make sure that you're doing it in a, not a sly way. I wouldn't say that, but yeah, in a more disguised way. And this is a very important thing, which I see people getting more into, which is really good. Um, always reply to comments. Once you reply to your comments on LinkedIn, it gets delivered most of the time to their networks. That same post gets delivered to their networks. So that's what I'm saying. That's even the same thing with tagging people. If you tag people, there is a high chance of your post being showcased to those people in their network. That is how you see these posts get 18,000 um, likes and 19,000 likes. You can see these examples um, very well. Now, the last one is connect with the right people. You need to think about what you're doing um, your social media platform for and connect with the people you think who will engage with your post, who want to see, um, who you want to see your posts, um, as well as people who might have um, interesting insights into your post. So it could be somebody you're targeting. For example, if you want people from, um, let's just say Deloitte to see um, your posts, look at the region of people from Deloitte, add those people up. I mean, I'm very sure at least 60% of them will connect with you and those people will see. And then you tailor your um, contact like that. If you want small businesses to see it, add small business owners. So it's, it's, it goes like that, um, so yeah. Now the results of a LinkedIn post, you need to see how, I, I, this is tests I've done within the last um, two weeks, uh, two to three weeks actually, um, where I've posted to just give you a feeler of what to gauge when it comes to LinkedIn posts. So um, I made a post about diversity, I made a post about um, well-being, and the best indicator for this is once you do something and you, you do the tagging correctly and you follow the in, uh, LinkedIn, um, process well and you follow these guidelines very loosely, you will start getting to be trending in certain hashtags. 
Um, and that can happen even from the get-go. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Because these, what I'm saying is, just because you trend in one of these hashtags doesn't mean that you are a LinkedIn king or queen. It essentially means that um, you had a good post and it's um, showing up in that. It doesn't mean that you won't get it in the future. It doesn't mean your post is bad, not anything whatsoever. Now, when it comes to the views, now sometimes um, there, lots of people could be viewing your posts um, for different reasons. And some people might not interact with it. Some people might interact with it. But what you try, you should try to do is try to engage as many views as possible. And that happens um, when you maximize your posts with the tips I gave before. If I would love to go into the specifics and the metrics and the analytics of this, but unfortunately we have a lot more platforms to get through. So um, of course you can um, email or ask me on LinkedIn itself, which we'll get through to later. Um, now Facebook. Um, Facebook is something that everybody is familiar with, I'm pretty sure, um, because of the fact that we all use it for our personal um, interactions. Now, a lot of people do not want to use this for um, professional um, growth, but there are ways to use it for professional growth. Um, so there are many um, active users within specific demographics. Targeting is great in Facebook because you see 2.45 billion active users. Um, and you can, you can find your niche, essentially, whether it's your personal or professional or even your um, business development. There are many ways to reach new people for free. I'll actually get to that um, because uh, you don't need to pay for ads in order for that to happen. Um, low cost ways, uh, ads are actually a good way, but, um, but still you can get organic results without spending a dime. Um, low cost ways of reaching new customers. Um, so there are, that's what I mean by ads. So there are very low cost ways, just that it takes a bit of research, um, but it's nothing to be scared of. One of the things I want to, talk to anyone um, who is either getting into social media or using their platforms now or getting into a new platform. It's not rocket science, believe me. It is not algorithms, magical code coming in to, no, it's just people interacting with people. And the more accessible it is, it's, it's actually um, the better it will perform. So it's, it's a learning curve as well. You kind of have to be in it for the long game. That's why a goal is really good to work towards it. Um, but there are quick wins that you can follow. It's a great foundation platform as well. The reason why I call it a foundation platform is the other platforms have more specific tones to it, but Facebook allows a lot of different stuff. It was kind of, in my own personal view, the original um, social media platform, although there was MySpace. Um, which uh, not many people remember anymore, but Facebook was the evolution of that. So it's a great foundation platform. Tips for using Facebook. And this is for a business context, a professional context, not so much for a personal context because you don't want heavy engagement just because, um, I don't know, you might want it, but um, you don't want heavy engagement just for things you want to post randomly. You want engagement for specific things. Um, one of the things is use a call to action and have a key goal for your posts. Yet again, I come to the point, have a key goal. If you want to show your research to more people, that's your key goal. If you want to sell coffee machines, then that's your key goal. If you want um, people to attend your podcasts, that is a key goal. So there is, there's just lots of key goals that is very specific to you. If you want to get seen by more finance professionals, in managerial positions, that's your key goal. So there's lots of key goals you could have. Um, find your audience as they will most likely be there, even if it is a niche. What I found is you can find everything ranging from people who love pop music um, in the um, early 2000s to people who explore 16th century and do very deep dive research into 16th century music. So it's it's, it's so accessible and those communities engage with each other and it's even though um, Facebook is not a super knowledge driven platform as I'd like to see it personally um, because of the fact that there's not a lot of professional information going into it or research information going into it it is a really good platform because you can find your niche within those groups 
Um, use your own network to your advantage. This goes for every single social media platform. Nobody grows their own, I mean, some people do if you go viral, but nobody grows their own network without actually capitalizing on your, um, like what you already have. So it's the people that interact with you. It could be your parents, if you could have, it could be your friends. If you have neither of those, um, which interact with your posts, then that's also fine. It, it is just an advantage to have. It's just a good start because then it will start delivering. It's a good bit of kick in the beginning. Um, use niche groups. As I said, you can use niche groups on um, Facebook. There are very, very specific groups that you can get to. Just search for the group. I'm telling you, you'll be amazed to find the very specific groups that you'll find on Facebook. They're very specific. Um, interact and start building um, relationships with your best engagers. Now, this comes for Facebook pages that you manage, not your personal page, mostly, because you need to start building relationships with people who interact with your posts, who actually comment on your posts and liking with your posts, because you need to think of it as like a fire that you need to kindle, essentially. And the longer you keep it burning, the longer interactions they're going to have with you. It's just the same concept as growing a small business, essentially. Um, that's why Facebook decided to introduce badges, like badges for um, best commenters and decided to invent quirky names for it. It's because that works. And share in all the relevant places. This comes for professional content as well as business content. Just share, share, share. I have gotten a um, page which had 10 likes for two months to actually have a post that engages only 100 people, although it has 10 likes, to actually 14,000 by sharing in relevant places. 14, that means 14,000 people saw it because I chose to share it in these specific groups. This is very much tested. I've tested several times. The more you share it, the more people see it. It's just a basic concept. So share in these groups, share anywhere possible. That's, that's my base advice for Facebook, because it's a very shareable platform. Unlike Instagram, which I will get to, because it's a little bit more rigid, you have a lot of flexibility in Facebook and also LinkedIn. It is good to capitalize on it when you're building your own personal brand and also your business's brand. Now, Twitter. Getting onto Twitter. Twitter is a very interesting platform, which, to be honest, I didn't start engaging with until about two, two and a half years ago, because um, it seemed like a platform for celebrities um, talking about um, certain quirky aspects of certain things, but I, I found it to be a very, very fascinating platform. It's a great place to start a conversation. The reason why there's a word limit or a, um, what's it called, letter limit, is because of the fact that you need to keep things short and sweet. You need to be able to ignite a conversation. I mean, initially you might be apprehensive to start um, posting uh, a question out to your group. Don't do that. Just be consistently posting and engaging. Now, it's as consistent as engaging as you want to be because there's a lot of academics who use Twitter when it comes to academics and a lot of academics who are like, I don't want to use Twitter. You need to want to use it um, if, if you want to actually interact with it. You don't need to say, I'll invest two hours every day to do this, but say, think about it. Just do 30 minutes every week if you want to. Start off with that. Allocate that to create a post and put it out and stay true to that. It could be while you're doing something else, listening to music, and try to make it fun. That's the only thing. That way you can actually build content and be, because if you overthink it and think, is this piece of content so perfect for this platform, you're eventually going to spend time actually scrutinizing it so much that it's not only going to delay it, that it's going to, um, what's it called? stagnate. So there's a good balance between actually thinking about it and um, being informed is really good because you need opinions if it's a very specific and a very sensitive um, piece of information. That's very important. But at the same time, you don't need to overthink it yourself. Is this tagged properly? Is this done the right way? So yeah, great to have short but informative interactions. So it could be very knowledge driven. It could be sharing stuff and um, great for sharing factual links. It could be non-factual links if you want. But what I've seen is factual links. People love to see the news on Twitter. That's why Twitter news is a thing. Um, people share news through Twitter. It's a great platform. You can use Twitter any way you like, but these are the ones that I found. 
tips for using Twitter. I know I'm conscious that I'm rushing to, through these and um, I'm talking a lot, but I'm just a bit conscious of time. Um, it offers your own, try to offer your own unique perspective because um, you need to offer your unique perspective. Otherwise it will not work. Like I said with Facebook, you need to th think about how do I react to this situation? Think about why reaction videos on YouTube is so popular. Think about the concept of that because people react to it in their own unique way. Same thing goes for social media with your writing. You need to think about what you'd say and then try to tailor it to the platform, not restrict it based on the platform, but try to tailor it to the platform, try to maximize it essentially, but not spend too much time doing it, but offer a unique perspective, let what you want um, and share your ideas and thoughts. It's the same thing. If you have an idea or a thought and you want to share it, go ahead. I don't think there's anything restricting you. This is for personal usage of um, Twitter, but for businesses, um, you should share whatever thoughts you have as a business and whatever ideas you have as a business. It's a great way of interaction. Um, interact with other users and reshare their tweets. That's how you build engagement. Building engagement on Twitter is harder than the other platforms. It is harder to grow a Twitter page than the other two pages, as I've personally seen. Um, so interact, interaction is key in resharing tweets. Use hashtags. Now, hash uh, Twitter is kind of the king of hashtags because you can see a lot of um, what's it called? Interactions with hashtags on Twitter. Sorry, there's an ambulance going past. That's been a common thing today. I hope everybody's okay on the other side of the ambulance. Um, but yes, um, so use hashtags and look at hashtag trends. If you go to trending on Twitter, you can see what people are talking about. Catch that wave if you have a unique perspective about something. Join trending conversations, essentially, and tag relevant people. Tagging again is brilliant for reaching new people and getting new followers, also following people, finding unique perspectives. You are bound to know people in real life that exist in the Twitterverse. So tag them if you find them relevant, you know? So yes. Okay, going on to our actual final platform um, is Instagram. Now Instagram has 1 billion active users. Um, Instagram, I think for personal growth, it's a great place as well as growing your business, but it is heavily image driven. So that means you're getting blasted with images 24 seven. There's a lot of imagery on Instagram, as you know. So emphasis on design and color. There's a lot of emphasis on design and color, as you know, in your feed. If you don't know about Instagram, it is basically a lot of pictures um, and captions take a back seat to the pictures. Pictures are the thing that clicks someone in. So if you're putting out a picture, make sure it clicks for you. Captions are used to tell stories. Now, I like, I wanted to put this in because captions on an Instagram posts could be something quirky and quick, call to action. But I like it when people tell stories because that's how you build a real um, interaction on Instagram, relatable interaction. There are bots on Instagram and that's constantly growing and bots are, things and basically accounts which are just ad hocly liking stuff um, and they're not real people. Um, Instagram is doing a decent job at filtering these, but there are more and more popping up. And the re how you filter out those people and the real people is people who interact with your real story, people who interact your, with your business in real ways. You can have a million likes on your Instagram um, post but still absolutely nothing can come out of it. I can tell you that honestly, you can have a million likes. Likes mean nothing in this day and age. Um, if you see someone with 1.2 million followers, go to their um, picture and see sometimes they have 12 likes. So that means it's, it might be bought, it might be not engaging comments. There's just so many things. Just even if you have 80 people um, basically following you, try to tell stuff to that 80 people. It will grow in time. Now with stories, I really like stories. Stories and IGTV um, offer a versatile way to interact with a lot of people because it delivers to everybody. And if you didn't know already, if you go live, you get everyone in your, um, what's it called, follower base gets the um, notification and people love to see stories. I think stories are the lazy person's scrolling technique because um, lots of us on Instagram will look at the stories more than we go through our feed. There's, I guess, I, well, I'm lazy like that. I don't want to do the up and down thumb movement. I'd rather just, you know, click on that, go next. But yeah, 
Um, tips for using Instagram, I'll be real quick with this. Try and stick to very few themes or one specific theme because if you're talking about travel and like different, different things like motor bicycles, plants, um, different types of rugs, it's great for a personal page where you're trying to reach and interact with your friends, but not really for your business or goal-driven Instagram. Keep it thematic, you know? Keep it to a very few amount of themes. And then you can capture the audience in that themes. The Instagram algorithm likes that. It also likes very specific color schemes as well, from what I've noticed in my own ways. Use hashtags, and this comes in categories, general, less general, and specific. In Instagram, use as many hashtags as you like, but put into these categories. Like, I think the maximum right now is 30. So put 30 hashtags up. If you feel uncomfortable with that, put a couple, like a few. So um, it, you, hashtagging is kind of important on Instagram, but um, you can use as much as you want, to be fair. Um, and it doesn't take a precedence over content. Um, use the stories feature to use, uh, reach more people. Stories, remember one really quick thing. In stories, you can geotag, that means show your location, um, hashtag, as well as tag people. Use all of those three things because um, I've seen things reach people in the area, like hundreds of people in the area of Oxford just because I tagged Headington on my story or um, a story of a, like a page that I'm managing. So the, the area sees this and that's what you want for your personal brand, your business, if you're using social media for a certain purpose. Geotags and IGTV. Like and comment on other posts. I kind of already explained what that is about. You need to be interactive with other people. It's a give and take essentially in the beginning. Even people who have millions of followers like to comment and post, um, like and comment on other people's uh, posts because it just keeps you relevant and it shows you're an interactive part of the community. And this is a thing that I've tested um, and it kind of helps. Keep one particular filter. If you're looking at posting certain things, keep one particular filter. Um, again, if anyone has any questions um, coming in, please just uh, put them out um, on the Q&A section while we go through. Um, try not to use words in a picture. Now, this is the same thing that comes on Facebook. Do not use too many words within the picture, especially if you're promoting the post because it will promote to less people and the algorithm will recognize that these pictures are just a big ad. So it will stop it from delivering to a lot of people. Um, and let your personality shine through. And that could be your business personality or your personal personality. Now, coming back, uh, coming to the um, kind of the final-ish part of um, my uh, like uh, if social media specialization area, when should I post? Now, this is something that everybody thinks and asks about. To be fair, with the current day and age, this, this information I have here is pre-COVID, but what I've noticed right now is people interact as long as it's not 2 a.m. And again, think about where you want to be interacting with people from. Do you want to be interacting with people from the UK or the US? Think about the time differences and don't be restricted by this. If you have a good idea at, of to post on Instagram at 8 a.m. on Monday and you really want to post it, just post it. There is no hard and fast rule that says it has to be posted Friday, 12 p.m. And I've seen only marginal improvements in data when you post it at the right times, to be fair. Um, sometimes it clicks and it goes to more people. Use this as a guideline, um, but if you want to post it another time, it's not going to heavily penalize you at all. So these give you kind of a guideline of times. Now I'm going to hand it off to um, my brilliant colleague, I'm going to stop sharing now, um, Amanda, who will be talking about um, very many things to do with contentation. Again, I want to thank Amanda for being here. I've really wanted her to be here because of the fact that um, she is a design guru. <laughs> thank you for having me, Jude. Um, I think design guru is a bit of an overstatement. <laughs> Um, right, I'm just going to share my screen. Let me know if you have any trouble seeing it. Okay, can you hear me okay as well? Yeah, all good. Sure. 
So I'll get straight into it. So today I'll be speaking to you about ways in which to really create um, effective design and content so you can be your own designer and also evaluate design decisions. So like Jude said, if you have any questions, please just pop them in the Q&A feature and we'll do our best to answer them right at the end. So uh, before that, I'll just tell you a little bit about who I am. So that's me on a really big screen and my really big head on there. <laughs> uh, my name is Amanda and I'm a recent grad here at Brooks. So I studied interior architecture and not graphic design. So my knowledge in graphic design is very much self-taught. Um, it's just something that I was interested in, logos, posters, social media, and anything to do with that. But most importantly, what is a content creator? So a content creator is, that, is someone who is essentially responsible for the contribution of media, but most commonly digital media. So this includes things such as images, videos, and social media posts, for example, which is what I'll be touching on today. So a question you should really ask yourself before you actually get into creating your, your own content is why would you want to be involved or evolve your own uh, online marketing strategy and why would you want to be your own content creator so i'm going to touch on the negatives first um <laughs> just to throw you off a little bit so like anything you do for the first time content creation can be incredibly time consuming so whether you're the ceo of a business or maybe you're a lecturer can you negotiate this much time um, and is there anyone that you can share the load with it can also be incredibly frustrating when your design isn't what you planned for it to be or your feedback, for example, isn't actually quite what you expected because of your limited skill set. So consider these things and also just in general, designing is just actually not everybody's cup of tea. Um, now, I'm also going to tell you some benefits of, of, of creating your own content. So you'll always be in control of your work to the very last detail. Uh, design resources are quite easy to come by. If not free, then won't cost a lot of money at all. Um, you're able to open your mind and be a lot more critical of other brands. Creating your own content almost gives you that authority to make more informed design decisions. Uh, you can apply your style. And just to let you know that design is extremely contagious. So if you do like it, then you're more than welcome to also go freelance. So first things first, I think the thing that I found to be the, the essential thing to, to do is to find your niche. Um, what is the agenda behind your content? And by this, I mean, who is your design intended for? So essentially your target audience. It's really important to know this information because this will tailor the way your design will go moving forward. So there are a lot of places, places to really gauge design inspiration, such as, you know, Pinterest, Instagram, um, Behance and Issue, for example, but definitely take inspiration from the things around you. For example, you know, if you're a food and drink business, literally look in the fridge, you know, look at the things that people adv advertise to you and just try to be as creative as you can. The next step is to record your research either write it down, get a journal, or um, I would definitely recommend to create a mood board as you're able to see things at face value. Um, consider the following as well, uh, photo quality, the use of font, the alignment of text, literally evaluate everything as to why you picked what you picked um, when finding and researching other brands. So, Congratulations, you are now the CEO of Petal Limited. You know that your branding identity is plants. So like the one shown on the left-hand side, you decided to use a green color palette as from your research, you saw that a lot of environmental companies like uh, Blooming, and Blooming Artificial and Jay Parker's here used as a dominant color. Um, that's great because it means that the green makes the user feel healthy, hopeful, nature and growth so that that definitely ticks a box of how your brand is intended to make your user feel. Some other brands, however, are less obvious, such as uh, Nike and Patch Plants on the right hand side. So these two brands have actually completely two different design agendas, but have both used the color black, which hands over a sense of power and elegance to its consumer. 
Lastly, let's take a look at Netflix as part of the entertainment industry. In Netflix's mission statement, they, their goal is to inspire people, but also give them the freedom and power. So as we can see, it's very important that your design agenda, brand promise and visual guidelines all align. If you get stuck, there is a little resource that you could use. It's called Adobe Color Wheel um, and it's free to use. I know that a lot of Adobe pro um, products are so usually something you have to pay for, but yeah, no, it's definitely free to use. So you simply type in um, some of the tags that relate to your business, such as flower or water or skin or even lecture and see what, what sort of color combinations come up. Um, so like the example below, it will give you a hex code and the hex code is the exact color you would, you would normally use um, when applying this to, um, to other programs such as Canva or Adobe Photoshop, for example. The next step is to create your visual hierarchy. Now, this is once you've actually honed down on your color scheme. So it's really important to, to create a visual hierarchy. Um, this allows you to decide what is visually most important on a page and what is least important. And these are determined by a few factors such as size, color, contrast and typography. So in other words, text to name a few and can be applied to both text and images. So as you can see, this page actually looks really cluttered right now. Um, so that's just a little tip is don't use all of them at the same time. Um, try and pick a few that stand out the most to you. Um, and yeah, so if you, if you want, uh, for example, the title to stand out the most, think of how your, your, the size of your text aligns with the color, for example. Um, this is a really important slide. It's actually about getting the right tools to suit the way you choose to work. So there are benefits of both paid options and free options, the most obvious being their templates and easy to, to use design facilities. So the paid example I've actually referred to is Adobe, um, who provide a number of options tailored to creating unique experiences and designs. Um, you often start designing from scratch, and so you are not likely to see the same design elsewhere. Uh, Adobe luckily have a free trial available for a short period of time. And uh, if you're students and staff, you also have, they also have a discounted version at £16.24 per month. I think from then it's about £25 per month um, as um, if you're not student or staff. Um, they also have offline access. Um, and a cloud storage, which means you're able to access Adobe anywhere, um, obviously, on, as long as you have online access. Now, the free example I've given is Canva, which is extremely popular in creating content. It's very stylish and you're able to produce quick designs and have your social media to presentations ready in literally no time. Um, as, with, as with most free apps, though, there are premium options. Um, which do come at a cost, but you should be able to access most features for free. Um, they also now have a feature where you can edit videos on there. Um, and another, another couple of uh, apps you can use for videos are iMovie, if you're part of the Apple crew, or Capwing, um, which is uh, a brand new startup where you can edit videos uh, just for free under 40 minutes. Um, please take advantage of everything you see online. Um, as Jude was say, saying, take advantage of your social media. There are free resources everywhere. You just need to kind of open your eyes and have a look and see, see what it is actually out there. I mean, like you found this event, I'm not quite sure how you would have found it, but you maybe you found it on Eventbrite or maybe through enterprise support marketing. Uh, but you're also able to find events on Instagram, on YouTube, um, explore creative platforms, for example, The Dots and Behance, and really try and find tutorials on how to create certain things, because I guarantee you would be able to find it. So now you're ready to start designing and become your own content creator. And with everything we spoke about today, so you'll be able to produce your own visual guideline. So your design inspiration, your color evaluation, visual hierarchy, typography, image resolution, and 
finding the software that best suits you all tailor to contributing to an amazing and essential visual guideline which you'll be able to replicate on every piece of um, every piece of branding that you produce now on. Uh, the best advice I can give you is to just keep on practicing. Uh, make sure you get enough feedback um, from your friends, your family, and most importantly, your target audience, and keep on practicing um, again. So once you get your feedback, just practice, practice, practice. Yeah, that's me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Amanda. Um, that's insightful to even myself. Um, and the reason why that's so important is, um, me included, I've, I really want to know how I can make my own content by just <laughs> photos. And sometimes when you start something, you don't really have the content that you like want to put out. So Definitely. it's a sufficient way of putting it out. And I think with the current climate of where the world's at you need you need to kind of use every single tool but not overwhelm yourself as well so stick to what you can do and you want to and have the want to do it um and then basically use it to your advantage and yeah. don't let it overwhelm you this in social media is not something that should get you your head wrapped up in a bad way literally you should you should definitely just be um using it way you want it and be use it um i yeah. we are just, um, can i add to that jude i think yeah of course of, please you know uh working to your capabilities i think that's really important um don't overwhelm yourself with design because design is design is actually incredibly simple um a lot of design especially now is graphic usually you'll see a plain background with a few words on it you just really need to look at something and evaluate what it is that you're actually designing um, before getting into it too much but it shouldn't be too complicated especially with with the time that we're in now think people just want easily accessible design something that's very easy to read and very easy to see and so don't overcomplicate your designs um, believe me <laughs> yes so shall we just move on to um, a few questions I think we have about um, 10 minutes Becca you wanna yeah you've got quite a few questions coming in so I'll try and pick some of the, the more desperate ones. Um, so the first one from Maria is, how do you know what hashtag to use in Instagram that attracts followers? That is, that is a very, very good um, question. And uh, the main thing about that question, the, what I really think is an important consideration is, what are you exactly doing? So um, if you are to say selling plants, you need to research a little bit on what hashtag are being used to sell those plants please please do not hashtag um an emoji or just hashtag like like there are certain hashtags that are blocked on instagram and because they are overcrowded by bots so essentially you need to have general tags um again i'll use plants general tags which which are like miniature plants you can even be plants but it, it has to be the narrower topic think about a funnel the narrower um, aspects of your topic, going down to the middle, going down to the end. So in order to get the actual hashtags, you need to research your topic and see what others in that space are doing as well and how they got an engagement. So do some research. Um, I would definitely be able to answer that more in depth if you did tell me what exactly the business was. Um, please do um, ask me. Uh, we're going to show both of our emails and later on so that you can um, message us with those that specific questions. Perfect. Okay. Um, the next one. Um, so you said in your presentation, Jude, that you should try not to use words in a picture. Um, so Jordan has messaged saying, I run a short comic account, so there are always words in the picture. Do you have any tips if there's no way around this? Um, I wouldn't say um, that's the thing. So if, if you're promoting, let's say this, this is very important. Let me make a quick disti distinction. It's very important when you're promoting. If you're promoting a post, um, a paid post, then you can put it up for manual review. Basically, the reason why um, most um, Instagram posts with words are not, um, like doesn't get that much engagement is the algorithm or the reviewing um, platform. It is basically says, you're just sticking in all the words as a picture platform. So essentially, there is 
no essential way around it. In Facebook, I know you can put it for a manual review and that usually gets you freed up. For comics, I don't think it's a huge issue because the lettering is small and it's on, um, what's it called? Each of, I guess, each of the pads. Like I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, reading comics on Facebook and Instagram. And they're usually, to be fair, the general um, comics that you see there are not that letter heavy. The words aren't that big. The letters aren't that big and they're um, to a certain size. Just make sure words don't occupy most of your bubble, each individual bubble, and then you should be fine because there is definitely no way around it. Comics need to have words um, unless it's a visual comic. So if, you're, if you are actually looking to promote it, make sure to submit it for manual review so that someone can actually see this is a comic. There are ways around it. So I, I was more referring to um, actual posts where it's like, come buy this now in big letters and that's promoted. So that, that will not get engagement. Even in manual review, they'll tell you, use something with less um, wording on it. Perfect, okay, um, there's one for Amanda here. So it was, uh, you were talking about mood boards. Um, do you have any suggestions for resources to create mood boards or any places people can go for a bit more inspiration? Um, yeah, definitely. So, I mean, I'm a huge advocate for, I, I literally would go back to basics and kind of get an A3 sheet of paper, you know, cut and stick things down um, because I feel like you're able to visually see it a lot better. Um, but I know, I recognise that everyone doesn't really have the time for this. Um, even if you use PowerPoint, for example, um, you type in um, any image that you think would resonate with your brand, for example, um, water bottle and you type in PNG image at the end of it PNG transparent and so it doesn't have a background behind it um, and when you paste it onto the page it would literally be the, the image the outline of that image and not the background uh, so you're able to collage things a lot more easily um, so yeah no that would that would be my recommendation for that perfect okay um, just conscious of time you probably fit a few more in so um, the next one is, can you give me some examples of what you mean when you say call to actions in a personal Facebook post? Of course, um, I'm sorry, I was rushing through that. Um, I think I would have been more um, elaborate. That's, that's kind of a marketing term. So a call to action would be something that actions someone, which means basically telling them to do something, being like, give me your opinion or give me your thought about this, subscribe to this, look at this article, um, comment below. Any of those can be a call to action. You can have sneakier calls to action, like if you really feel strongly about this topic, um, then you should definitely share your thoughts. You know, you should, you should more, more, you can make it more head on, depends on what you're marketing. You can make it more head on, like to the point, like this now, not like this now, because that doesn't work, like comment on your thoughts or um, something along the lines of, if you do have any more thoughts to add to this, um, please comment below. This is very, very good to have that um, because of the fact that it engages. There's sometimes, most of the time, if you think about a con conversation um, and you're talking to someone, you don't want them to just be talking at you. Um, you want to be able to reply to something and you want to be able to get your two cents and feel involved in the conversation. It's both better for both parties, to be fair. But if it's something like click this here or click this now in order to register for your uh, what's it called, slot in this webinar, that, that still works, that's more direct. So that's a call to action. Perfect, okay. I think we have time for one more. So we'll go with, um, do you have any quick tips to make Twitter posts engaging, bearing in mind the character limitation? Of course. Um, the thing with Twitter is uh, the character limitation is a huge thing. And you need to be use that character limitation with your wording as um, engaging as possible. Try to fit your question in, or if you're talking about something engaging, it's like abbreviate it as much as possible. For example, you might write a 500 word um, a LinkedIn post about, again, selling your plants. And then otherwise, like in Twitter, you would be like, see what uh, we have to say about these exciting plants we have on offer and have a link to something. Links usually work on link, uh, I mean Twitter, when you want to get engaging, people engaging to the main contacting. But if you're just putting out a tweet, 
It is just trying to tailor it so it incites and ignites a conversation or offering a key piece of information. And always remember to hashtag um, below the tweet. You don't essentially need to tag anyone within the main tweet. Go to the bottom tweets um, in order to, uh, more tweets, I mean the retweet feature, in order to put your hashtags and your people tags. Perfect, okay. I think we could probably round it off there. Um, I know there was a few questions throughout asking for the slides, um, but this whole recording will be going on our YouTube. So I have put a link in the chat, but just in case you missed it, it's literally just Brooks Enterprise Support on YouTube. That's where all of our webinar recordings go. So if you did miss anything or want to pause on anything, you can do that. That will be up in the next week or so. Um, but yeah, for the time being, thank you both to Jude and Amanda. I know you've got your contact details there. So if anybody yes. does get in touch, I'm guessing they're free to drop you a message. Yeah, of course. And, and thank you for everyone um, for attending. And thank you for my amazing team, um, which Becca and Amanda is a part of, and um, our amazing manager, Lydia, for giving us this um, environment to actually do this and actually explore our ideas. And also, there are some of our amazing teammates in the audience as well, um, Kriti and Kat. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for coming down. All of um, our teammates as well that can't be there um, today. Thank you so much for all your support. Um, yes, and um, really, really glad to see everybody here. I'm surprised that this many people came. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> um, yeah, and it was lovely <laughs> to actually talk to you guys. Um, again, please email um, or connect with us on LinkedIn um, to know about more of the stuff we talked about now or enterprise support. Um, we are a great team. We're here to help our staff and our students. Um, as you can see, we are a great team. Um, <laughs> we're amazing. Amanda and Becca are so please. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you really need to have words? And on that note, I think we'll call it a day. So thank you so much, everybody, for tuning thank in. Thank you, everybody. Um, take care, everybody. See you again later. Bye. All right, take care. Bye.